what should our, we know that God establishes government. What should our view be towards the government? Does the Bible talk about that at all? Yeah, it talks about it in several places, um, especially over the New Testament, where my mind goes. Be like, starting off Romans 13 would be a good one, right? That's Romans 13 is a great section. Sometimes we'll have a verse, and we'll like quote that verse, but this is a good section. Uh, we got time so far. I wouldn't mind sort of reading through it. Sure, you want me to read uh, it? Yeah, Scott, you go ahead and read it. Or <clears throat> Yeah, start, I mean, verse... Let's start with verse 1. Yeah, 1 through I 7 mean, is the section, so go ahead and start in verse 1. All right. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Uh, whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So when you resist the authority, I got the New King James, mm-hmm. resist the authority of the government, the governing authorities, verse 1, you're resisting the ordinance of God. Yeah. When you because resist the government. they're ordained by God. Yeah. You're resisting God. Mm-hmm. People, we don't think about that a lot, do we? No. We think, well, not this enough. isn't, no, not enough. You're going to think, well, this maybe breaks the law, but it's not a sin. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's other passages. We'll finish reading this one, but yeah. but this isn't this isn't like a one time he talks about yeah. it. I mean, this is over in Peter. This is over in Titus. Yeah. I mean, it's it's multiple sections in the New Testament that talk about yeah. this. So, and just before we're going to get there, so don't run ahead of us. Think we don't know about this passage, but we'll get to Acts five twenty nine, yeah. which says we obey God rather than men. We're yeah. going to get to that. Whenever the yeah. government tells you to do something that is sinful, you don't do it. But we'll get to that. So let's stay in Romans thirteen. Uh, I guess verse three maybe is where you. Yeah. Stop. Okay. Uh, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay. So sometimes different translations are harder to understand than others. Basically, a summary of this is what he's saying is he's saying, look, the rulers are supposed to be people that punish evil. So mm-hmm. if you do good, a majority of the time, right, you're going to say, well, there's there's examples in history where people did the right thing and they were punished for it. That's true. But a majority of the time, it's like a book of Proverbs, book of principles. When you do the right thing, mm-hmm. you normally don't have problems with the government. Whenever you commit crimes, then you're going to get arrested. And the Bible here says that the government has the right from God to bear the sword, right? That's capital punishment. The mm-hmm. government has the right from God, that for certain crimes, like, I mean, the Old Testament, any man who's basically sheds blood, his blood will be shed. We're not going to dive into that too much on this episode, maybe a different one. But the government has the right to bear the sword given to them by God. Yeah, they've got the authority to enforce the laws. That's right. In some cases, that means that uh, they may need to put someone to death for something they've done. Sure. But uh, even even more general than that, they they have the ability to force their will to be done. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that kind of sparked this episode is like, you know, you look in the world today, especially on social media, it's such a huge thing right now. And um, Christians or maybe non-Christians like, well, you know, we've seen stuff on on Facebook or something be like, we need to assassinate this person who's a politician or, you know, in that position. And, you know, as Christians, like, I'm glad we're diving into this because like, should we treat them as people or just some figure and like just slander their name or should we have to respect them? So I'm glad that we're diving into deep into this. You're so. exactly right. Yeah. I mean, for instance, I think about the, all the, the stuff that's going against the police right now. I mean, literally, the Bible says, and we're about to get to verse 6. Uh, let me read verses 5 and 6. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you pay taxes. For they, speaking of the government, are what? God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. I know in verse 4, God's minister, I think in verse 6, that word minister is the word diakonos, the Greek word where we get the word deacon, which just means servant, right? It was this idea of stirring up dust, right? They were so busy serving. Government officials are God's servants. Now, sometimes they might not act like it. I mean, Jesus called Herod a fox, right? Herod yeah. mm-hmm. was in a, a position of power, but maybe wasn't a moral man. Yeah. But like when, when I see a police officer, right? If, if I get pulled over for like an expired registration, I'm not going to be mad at the guy. I'm actually... It might, as contrary as I might thank him and say, hey, do you know you're God's minister? You're God's servant. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that a lot of people <laughs> realize that, you know? Maybe like, you well, thank a, you. Maybe you can get a study out of that somehow. Well, right? that's kind of the goal. If yeah. I, yeah. 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 You know, hey, did you thank you for my ticket? Did, did you, you know, know that it? you're a minister of God's servant, Romans 13, 6? <laughs> maybe <laughs> he'll say, really? No, hey, you'd like to have a Bible study with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we need to respect the, the people that God puts in. You, know, you might not understand why God put a, ru- a ruler in power. 
you may say, well, I can't understand why God, well, there's a lot of things that God does that we mm-hmm. don't understand, mm-hmm. but that doesn't change what scripture says. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. What verse did I, I you stopped at verse off. six. You yeah. want to read seven? Uh, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. And tribute, another way to translate that is taxes. Yeah. So taxes to whom taxes are due. Wait a minute. You're telling me I have to pay taxes? You're telling me I have to pay taxes, Tucker? Oh, man. Man, it seems like Jesus said something about that somewhere. Even you know, Mississippi taxes? That's right. Even, even, Mississippi. even federal and state and sales tax. <laughs> in, in Luke 23, when the Pharisees took Jesus before Pilate, and they were trying to get him killed, right? They told Pilate. Now, Pilate is the, the governor over mm-hmm. Judea for the Roman Empire, right? Verse 2, Luke 23. They began to accuse him, accuse Jesus, saying, we found this mellow, per- mellow, this fellow, <laughs> perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, okay? Well, that was a lie. What did Jesus just say? What, what, were you in Luke, Tucker? Yeah. Read Luke, I think, 20, 25. 20, 20, okay. Luke 20, 25. This is what Jesus said. Luke 20, 25. These pages are so thin. All right, I'll read it. <laughs> Luke twenty twenty five. He said to them, "Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but to God the things that are God." I mean, what is Jesus saying? You pay taxes to who? To Caesar. Yeah, the yeah. government, the ruler. Yeah. So Jesus said it. That should settle it, right? They're his. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They're his. God says, "Look, God establishes the government. Mm-hmm. You pay taxes. Why? Because the government is supposed to fulfill certain functions. Yeah. One of those is punishing the evildoer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I super stoked about paying taxes? Not necessarily, but yeah." You know, they have a purpose. Yeah. God put them in place. Yeah, God put them he in place. He expects us to do it. That's right. Uh, if I'm going to be a faithful child of God, I need to follow him in all things. That's not exactly just the right. things that, that I personally prefer. That's exactly right. So. Yeah, I mean, God established the government and says, hey, you pay pa- taxes to support them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, God right. set it up. You know, exactly. I'm not going to argue with it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, what about, you know, Tucker mentioned earlier about our attitude towards the government about how some people say, you know, oh, well, well, should we assassinate them? Go to 1 Timothy 2. What is 1 Timothy 2? Read verses uh, 1 through 4 if you have it, Tucker. All right. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So in verse 1 and 2, what are we supposed to do for kings and all who are in authority? We're supposed to do what? Pray for them. Pray for them. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks. You go through and look at those four different types. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to say thank you. You're supposed to pray for them to be successful. You're supposed to pray for God to provide for them. You're supposed to be thankful for them. That's not just like one word. That's four different words that deal with four different types of prayers. So, yeah, you're not supposed to assassinate your leaders. You're supposed to do what? Love them. Pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the president. All who are in what? All authority, uh, authority, yeah. That's in our case, the president, the Senate, the Congress, that's the Supreme Court, that's mm-hmm. the unelected officials, like the bureaucrats, like the head of the FBI, that's for like the head of whatever, whatever yeah. organization you want to talk about, yeah. Department of Defense, Homeland Security, the IRS, yeah. I mean, we're just yeah. talking about taxes, pray yeah. for them, anyone that's in authority, yeah, down to your city council, yeah, you know, I mean, like everyone that's in authority, you're supposed to pray for them, why, the police chief, yeah, officers, yeah absolutely, everybody. You're supposed to pray yeah. for them. I mean, you may say, yeah, well, that's my enemy. What did Jesus say about that? Yeah. Love yeah. them. Yeah. Love them and Bless do what? Them. Bless them yeah. that persecute you. Yeah. Pray for your enemies. Yeah. yeah. Right? To hate them would literally be it would to go against Jesus, to hate your yeah. politicians. And that's really, it's funny, when, you submit, when you're submitting to government, a lot of the things maybe you don't like, it's not submission unless you don't really like it. You know? Like if somebody, yeah. if, 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 the, if the government tells me to do this and I'm like, well, I don't like that. Well, that's not submitting. Yeah. Submitting now, not, is when you do it, whether you like it or not. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's so. And, I, and in submitting to the government, I'm submitting to Jesus, unless now, of course, let's let's just go ahead and jump there. Let's go to Acts five twenty nine, because I know there's going to be some people watching that you know we're in America and they're the government can't tell me what to do. Well, Jesus instituted the government. God instituted the government. But there are situations if the government requests or tells you or commands you to do something. That is against God's word. How do you respond? Acts 5.29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. That's right. So what does that mean? We got the exception. The exception is you ask yourself, will doing what the government tells me to do cause me to sin, Mm -hmm. to go against and break God's law? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, not my personal judgment, not my personal opinions, not my personal thoughts or feelings, but is it going to cause me to actually sin and do something opposite or fail to do something that God has instructed me to do? Yeah. Maybe that's gathering together on the first day of the week and worshiping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't say, well, the government said I can't do it, therefore I can't do it. No. Right? I mean, you see a lot of our brethren in places like, like China and other places around the world. Yeah where they still gather together even though they're not allowed to do it. Why? Yeah. Because the Christians and their number one allegiance is to God yeah. and to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the, the church, the body, right? Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to. Start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is.